And we are happy to have Chantelle Bisson back with us this week. Chantelle is an advice columnist for Milk and Heels magazine. Also regularly contributes to the Huffington Post Canada. And her specialty is talking about parenting and relationships. So welcome back again, Chantelle. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be back. Okay, now today we're going to take the time to talk about weekly meal prepping for families. This is something that most people don't like to do. So yeah. how do you do it to make it feel like it's not a make work project? Well, the thing that I found, because um, I'm not a natural cook, I have girlfriends that love cooking, they live for cooking. Um, I'm not that girl. Uh, I cook because my family needs to eat. That was my <laughs> thing. So, I was definitely one of those moms who really struggled a lot with making dinner um, fun, interesting, and not a burden for me. So the most important thing is going to the market with a plan, knowing what your meals are going to be so that you're not wandering through the supermarket aimlessly and you know putting junk in the cart. So I found that that was really, really helpful to start there. And then Sunday is always a good day, a good evening to sort of do that bulk cooking. Um, a, a great way to meal prep and have something go a long way is a really good bolognese. A nice spaghetti bolognese because you can use it for, um, you know, sloppy joes later, or you can just use it as it is for pasta. And kids used to like, my kids used to love getting that in their lunches as well. So I used to try to make meals that would do double duty, that they could do a dinner and then they could also end up in the lunch pail the next day or a couple of days later. So how many meals do you think you should prepare in advance? Is, do you go hard and try and make for a full week or you just try and do a couple days to make it easier at the beginning of the week? Well, again, this all depends on the schedule. Every family has a different schedule based on their kids' extracurricular activities. So what we would do on the nights that our girls were all busy with an activity, oftentimes those were the nights that we would choose to have an out out of the house dinner or order in for dinner. So I think that that's really important is looking at the schedule for the week in advance and that will help you determine how many meals you want to have prepped, how many meal meals you can get away with ordering in or going out for. And also um, what we did to toward the end was we started to get our girls involved in the dinners. And that was really twofold. One, it was teaching them kitchen skills, but it was also taking a lot of the work off me by having an extra set of hands in the kitchen doing meal prep. All right, well, Chantel, thank you so much. And you can follow Chantel on Twitter and Instagram at Chantel Bisson. Check out her website, it's ChantelBisson.com. And she will be back with us next hour, and we're going to discuss another hot topic, age-appropriate clothing choices. So, Chantel, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, welcome again, Chantel. And today we're going to get right at it and talk about age-appropriate clothing. You see all kind of debate on this. It gets into the media, gets into the schools. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, do you think you actually need to consult the school or do you just kind of go with your gut on what your kids should be wearing? Um, this is twofold. Um, I've had it happen both ways where a school has actually sent out um, the clothing expectations right. for the year and uh, what is appropriate and what is allowed and what's not allowed. So in a lot of instances, in my experience, that job was already done for me and those decisions were made for me. Um, but then in the in these instances where it wasn't made, there were some tough conversations that we had to have. I mean, I was that mom that I didn't even let my girls listen to Britney Spears or the Spice Girls <laughs> because I didn't feel like they were really, really doing the girl power any justice with the way that I felt that they were presenting themselves and the way they dressed. So I'm a little bit old fashioned and I'm probably gonna get a lot of heat for this and you <laughs> probably get a lot of comments, but I, um, I'm a big fan of age appropriate um, clothing in kids. And I think it is a parent's role. And I do think it's our prerogative to not allow our kids to leave the house dressed a certain way. Now, how do you handle it though when, you know, especially as they get teenagers and you have three girls, so you know this, uh, they get to that age where they think it's maybe age appropriate, but it's not. How do you handle it without it becoming a big fight every time they want to go out of the house just to go to school? Right? Um, <laughs> well, we've had that go both ways as well. We have had those knock down, drag down fights because we put our feet down and said, you are not leaving the house. And that those shorts are too short. That top is too low. That outfit's too tight. It's too revealing. It's too old for you. Um, but I think it's really important to have dialogue with your children and to trust that, you know, they want to have conversations. They want to learn and they want to understand why you're saying no. I think the danger in parenting is when we just say no flat out, you can't do that or you can't wear that or you can't be that way. I think that you as a parent always, always can, can win a battle if you come at it from humility and you just let your child know that you're coming 
with love and that you're telling them these things and you're setting them up for success because you know as an adult that a teacher will discriminate based on what a child wears and kids will pick pick on them and make fun of them on the playground. So I think once you let the kid know and your child know that the reason why you're taking the stand and why you're so firm are, you know, all these things, one, two, three, and you have, you want them to have a great experience out at, on the playground and out in the world. Okay, thank you so much, Chantel. And for more on this discussion, you can follow Chantel's social media, Instagram and Twitter, at Chantel Bisson, or check out her website, ChantelBisson.com. Chantel, thank you so much. We look forward to talking to you again next week. You're welcome. Thank you.